The topic is treatment plan and supportive periodontal therapy. Now, what is treatment plan? Treatment plan is nothing but a blueprint for a case management. You should always make sure that you always give a, a you always give your patient a treatment plan before you start off with any kind of a treatment. Now, what are the short-term goals of achieving or giving a treatment plan? The short-term goals is to eliminate all the infectious and inflammatory processes, but the long-term goal is reconstruction of your healthy dentition that fulfills all your functional and aesthetic requirements. What all involved? What all should be involved in for in the your treatment plan involves all these following decisions that you have to make and you have to incorporate in your treatment plan. Now, what are these? Need for an emergency treatment, teeth that will require removal, and then periodontal pocket therapy techniques, either surgical or non-surgical or regenerative. Endodontic therapy is needed. You have to incorporate. Need for an occlusal correction, including your orthodontic therapy. You need for an implant therapy. Need for caries removal and placement of a temporary or final restoration prosthetic replacements, your aesthetic considerations in your periodontal therapy and the sequence of therapy. Except for your emergencies, no therapy should be initiated until your treatment plan has been established. What are the phases of treatment plan? You have five phases. You have your the first phase being your, uh, uh, before your phase one, it is your preliminary or your emergency phase, followed by your phase one therapy or the preparatory phase. You have your phase two therapy or the surgical phase, and then you have your restorative phase or your phase three, and then you have phase four, that is your maintenance phase. Now, let's see what comes under your preliminary or your emergency phase. It is treatment of emergencies, like treatment of your dental or periapical abscesses, periodontal abscesses, or any other kind of a dental emergency. And then extraction of hopeless teeth and provisional replacements if needed. What all come under your non-surgical phase? These, this includes your preparatory phase or the initial phase therapy or a phase one therapy. Now these all, all are the, uh, if you can see the list given in the, uh, in the uh, slide, now these all come under your phase one therapy. That is your plaque control and patient education, your diet control, especially in patients with rampant caries, and then your uh, removal of calculus and root planing, and then correction of restorative and prosthetic irritational factors, your excavation of caries and restorations, especially your temporary or final restorations, your antimicrobial therapy, either local or systemic, and then your occlusal therapy, minor orthodontic movements, and provisional splinting and prosthesis. After your phase 1 therapy, you should always re-evaluate your uh, periodontal and your gingival status and the things, uh, whatever you have done after your phase 1 therapy. So, evaluation of the response to non-surgical phase includes your rechecking of your pocket depth and gingival inflammation and uh, rechecking for your plaque and calculus and caries. Coming uh, after this comes your surgical phase, that is your phase 2 therapy. In this surgical phase, you do all, you perform all your uh, periodontal surgeries or periodontal therapies including replacement uh, of implants and then your endodontic therapy. Under the restorative phase, that is a phase 3, you have to do your final restorations, fixed and removable prosthodontic appliances, evaluation of response to your restorative procedures and periodontal examination. Again comes towards the last, the last phase is your maintenance phase which includes uh, the phase 4 also called as a supportive periodontal therapy includes your period periodic rechecking of for cal calculus and plaque, gingival condition for the pockets and inflammation and then for the occlusion and tooth mobility followed by if any other pathological changes have to be periodically checked. Now, this is the correct sequence of periodontal therapy. Your first phase is all your emergency phase, if needed, is always followed by your non surgical phase. And immediately after your non surgical phase, you have your maintenance phase, that is, your rechecking of the periodontal tissue conditions. And then, followed, then you decide whether you have to go for a periodontal surgery or not. You decide if you have to go for a periodontal surgery or not, and then enter your surgical phase, followed by again a re evaluation of the surgical phase with your maintenance phase, and then move on to your maintenance, your restorative phase. And finally, once you're done with the restorative phase, and then you go on again to your maintenance phase, wherein you periodically recall the patient and then evaluate his status so that you would check for any pathological changes at the initial stages itself. 
coming that that would end your treatment plan now let's see your supportive periodontal therapy now this supportive periodontal therapy is also called as your maintenance phase the rationale behind the supportive periodontal therapy the main aim of long term therapy you know that it is to provide a general control for the patient in order to maintain a healthy and functional natural dentition throughout life what are the causes for the recurrence of disease or periodontal disease why do we need to periodically recall or periodically maintain the patient the, the causes for your recurrence of periodontal disease include an incomplete subgingival plaque removal nature of dental gingival unit and then improper restorations placed after your periodontal treatment was completed the failure of the patient to return for periodic recall visits and the presence of some systemic factors or diseases that may affect your host resistance to previously acceptable levels of plaque now this is what you are seeing an ins incorrect sequence of periodontal therapy wherein you without any periodic or supportive uh, maintenance phase you are just directly going on to the other phases and then for after completing all the entire treatment plan you are just going to your maintenance phase this is a very incorrect sequence of periodontal therapy if you see the next slide now this is a slide which shows the correct sequence of periodontal therapy and you have to follow this method of periodontal sequence now let's see what are the parts of your maintenance phase you have your part 1 which includes your examination your part 2 is a treatment and part 3 would be the schedule for next appointment let's see the part 1 your examination at least you should allot a period of about 7 minutes to 7 minutes in order to examine the patient at this stage of or at this part of your you are allotting about 7 minutes just for examination of the patient when the patient comes to you for the follow up visit so what all do you check for you check for medical history changes you need to ask the patient and evaluate if there has been any change in the medical history that you had recorded much before when the patient had come to you for the first visit apart from that you check if any oral pathological uh, examinations your oral hygiene status your gingival changes if any changes and then pocket depth changes your mobility changes your occlusal changes and your restorative and prosthetic changes then comes your part 2 that is a treatment phase wherein you allot about approximate time of 35 minutes to do your oral hygiene reinforcements your scaling and polishing and your chemical irrigation then following that is part 3 that is your schedule for your next procedure wherein you schedule your next recall visit and then schedule further periodontal treatment if needed and schedule or refer to a restorative or for a prosthetic treatment as and when needed Now this is the Merrin's classification, which Merrin's gave Merrin gave in order to determine when you have to uh, call or recall the patient, or what what are the regular periods of recall visit for every individual, because it is different for every individual. He categorized them into class A, class B, and class C patients. Now class A patients are those who have excellent results and have they maintained their Uh, dentition for about good period of time for about one year or more and class b uh, those patients who have generally good results uh, maintained reasonably well for about one year or more and then class 3 group of patients are those patients who are have generally poor results even after the periodontal therapy and they have uh, they require several other uh, means they have several other negative factors which are causing the recurrence of the disease now uh, according to uh, merin he said that we have to for the first one year after the periodontal therapy you have to keep the patient on the first year protocol uh, visit that is you need to do a routine therapy and uh, check for the if any uneventful healing and then uh, if there is an uneventful healing probably you have to within the first year itself you have to recall the patient every 3 months if you feel that within the first year when you have recalled the patient and all the events are successful they are the, the the heal events of healing are good and the patient is maintaining his cooperative and all that and then you can call the patient every 1 to 2 months if uh, every 6 months if not you probably have to call him 1 to 2 every 1 to 2 months if you have lot of complicated factors thank you that would end your supportive periodontal therapy